city councilors and mayor. My name is Sarah Smith from the New Mexico Freedoms Alliance. Several of you have expressed concern that people think you do not care about the many victims of crime in Las Cruces. I think it is clear that you do care, but I do wonder whether you care enough to be willing to consider trying something different. All across the city, we're seeing signs that what is being done now is not working. We're seeing increased property crime, with businesses and homes being vandalized, windows being broken, people's property being taken and vehicles being stolen. We're seeing more homeless people camping out at businesses and homes, approaching people asking for money, scaring children, threatening people, and leaving trash and feces all around. We're seeing increased usage of hard drugs, with drugged out people wandering the streets, harassing people, and leaving dangerous needles lying around where children can find them. And we're seeing people being harmed while trying to live peacefully and responsibly. Women such as Patricia from The Little Shop, who has been stalked and sexually harassed by a homeless man. Carlos, who was just here. A teacher from Dwell Yoga, who was attacked with rocks thrown at her car and threatened with being raped and killed while she was trying to go to work. And now Rosa Ortega, who was brutally attacked last week by a homeless person in broad daylight while trying to walk to the grocery store in Las Cruces. What is happening here in Las Cruces is not happening everywhere. For example, Lubbock, Texas, which has over double our population and a similar climate, has seen a sharp decrease in homelessness over the last five years. Lubbock is also not seeing the large increases in property crime, theft, and vehicle theft that we are seeing here in Las Cruces. To us families living and working here in Las Cruces, many of the solutions being funded by the council feel like band-aids when we actually need surgery. The city has removed rocks from the downtown mall to reduce the number of broken windows. The city is proposing to provide hygiene stations in neighborhoods where homeless people can use the bathroom and shower. The city offers money to businesses to help them repair their broken windows. Meanwhile, the attacks continue. And the city spends hundreds of thousands of dollars towards providing housing for homeless people, but without any requirements that people be off drugs, so that there have even been several drug dealers living at the Desert Hope Homeless Housing Project, which was partially funded by the city. Do you care enough to be willing to fund other approaches? Lubbock's decrease in homelessness is largely a result of their programs which provide temporary shelter for a maximum of six months for people who are required to be off drugs and working towards independent living. Boulder, Colorado has a ready to work program in it, which has a drug and alcohol free shelter with a focus on job readiness training and skills for becoming independent. After one year, people graduate from their program ready for employment and permanent housing. And their program has a 74% success rate in having people maintain employment and be independent. These are just some examples of approaches that are working better elsewhere. They are resulting in improved, rehabilitated lives for the homeless people so they can become responsible, beneficial members of the community. Do you care enough to try similar approaches here instead of continuing to focus on housing first? Thank you. Okay, so that was the fifth 